Hey guys, so in today's video, we are gonna be talking about my favorite vegan cooking secrets. These tips are great for anyone who is already vegan and you just wanna become a better cook. But if you're transitioning to the vegan lifestyle right now or you've already and you want to make sure that you are always satisfied, then this video is definitely for you. Because a lot of the things I'm gonna talk about today are ingredients that will help you replicate that umami flavor that people are really used to when they come from eating meat. I have lots of recipes and cooking tips and what I eat in a day videos coming in the future and I don't want you guys to miss anything, so make sure you hit the subscribe button. Okay, we have to start this conversation by talking about umami. Umami is that flavor that is essentially savory, like a deep, rich, savoriness and a lot of people associate that especially with eating meat especially steak um, but i have a secret for you you can get it in vegetables as well the foods that have the most umami are not necessarily just animal products soy sauce like i said will give your food so much richness and for an example of how i would use this I'm from Georgia, as y'all already know, so I grew up eating collard greens and that's like my favorite, one of my favorite dishes. In order to make like authentic collard greens, people usually use ham hock or smoked turkey neck to give it that smoked flavor. But if you're doing it fully vegan, it's very important to make sure you replicate that smoky southern soul food flavor. Soy sauce is your best friend. So I use soy sauce and smoked paprika in my collard greens and that combination really adds that deep rich umami flavor that people really want and need in really good collard greens so this is a light melt yellow miso there are different ranges of misos this one i like to add especially like in a hummus super good hummus is great already but adding miso will really bring out more of the flavor but also give it a little bit more richness as well and the other misos the darker misos you can use for say you're gonna make like a um, like a rich meaty sauce even like a gravy you can add those darker misos to that and they will give you so much umami and really do a great job at replicating the flavor that you're used to from animal products okay so tomato paste this is essentially concentrated umami flavor whenever i'm making say a tomato sauce i usually add tomato paste to it as well even though i'm already using tomatoes because the tomato paste just gives it so much more of that savoriness that i absolutely love now this is one of my favorite secrets it is talk about underrated this is porcini mushroom powder if you've ever eaten a vegan dish and you're like it's good but it's missing something especially like a savory thing that's because it's not it's the umami factor is not uh, optimized essentially mushrooms are the best thing to add and this mushroom powder is essentially a concentrate of that umami flavor that is specifically in mushrooms i will leave links to everything that i mentioned down below so you can give it a try and you can see like I have so much left. You only need to use a little bit of it to really add so much more deliciousness to your meal. Okay, let's talk about if you want to replicate the flavor of seafood. This is dulse seaweed. It's a super briny, uh, so very salty, very flavorful. It tastes like the ocean, like straight up, this is what the ocean tastes like. And ume plum vinegar. Ume plum vinegar, again, extremely salty. It's, and it's not like from the ocean like seaweed, but it still has a briny taste and flavor. I like to add these to my chickpea tuna, to vegan crab cakes, anywhere I wanna replicate that seafood flavor. Okay, so now let's talk about acids, yes? Apple cider vinegar, the, way I, the reason I call it a secret, and everybody already knows about it, but the reason it's a secret in vegan cooking is especially because it's great for vegan baking. Now you know, eggs and baking don't just hold the product together, they also help them rise and give them a nice light crumb. Essentially, apple cider vinegar will do the same thing when it reacts with your baking powder and baking soda. So that's my secret there. Now with the other acids, really citrus, I bring this up because, again, if you've ever had a meal where you're like, this is good, but it's missing something, more than likely, 
you can add a little bit of citrus to it, a little acid, and that will just bring out all the flavors and bring everything together and just make it all make sense and make it absolutely delicious. I just went to the store earlier today, the grocery store, and I bought ooh, what feels like 10 pounds of mushrooms. Guys, I can make a whole video about mushrooms. This is the secret. Mushrooms are so diverse. There are just so many different types. If you don't like one type, you might like another. Especially these meatier, more versatile mushrooms that I bought today. Each one of them has a totally different flavor profile and different texture. So depending on what, say, animal product you're trying to replicate, you can use a different mushroom. For shiitake mushrooms, these are really great in a dish that you would otherwise use seafood in because the flavor, but also the texture is very delicate and light. Oyster mushrooms, I use these to make a vegan chicken, fried chicken. You can batter them and fry them just like you would real chicken, and they are actually better. They're tender, they're juicy, and they hold all that batter and all that spice. And unlike chicken, let me say this for all the mushrooms, Unlike chicken, they have flavor on their own. You can literally just cook these with just a little sprinkle of salt and they are absolutely delicious. Not the case with animal products at all. My Taki mushrooms, these are another meaty mushroom with a more mushroomy flavor. So I love them. I think these are my favorite actually. Now let's move on to king oyster mushrooms. These are really great. My favorite way to make these is to shred them. So you cut the bottoms off and you shred them with a fork and you can make carnitas. You can make carnitas, you can make sloppy joe. Any recipe that you would otherwise use like shredded chicken or shredded pork, this is all you need. It is so tasty. They're so much better for you. Another way that I see a lot of people um, using king oyster mushrooms is to make vegan scallops. So you can try that too. Now mushrooms are a secret because they're underutilized, but I also wanna show you guys a way to cook mushrooms that is really, really great and will bring out the flavor of them, but also their meaty texture. To clean them, I just use a wet paper towel. The only reason you don't wanna use, like just wash a mushroom under the faucet like you would a vegetable is because they'll absorb that water and it'll make the mushrooms really like soggy, which we're actually going for the opposite of that. And even some mushrooms, like these maitake mushrooms, you can't even begin to clean them with a rag. That's why when you buy them, like I bought them in the grocery store today, they came wrapped in plastic. So we're just gonna cut the bottom off. I saved the bottom and put it in my mushroom broth. And so for these mushrooms, you basically just, you can break them apart. They're really soft and delicate. The king oyster mushrooms, you can just cut in like little medallions. They're gonna get really nice, really meaty. And again, you could also shred these too. It doesn't matter, but both ways are delicious, but very different because it's different texture. And for shiitake, just take the, the stem off. And then for shiitake, I just thinly slice these. And I'm just going to cook these all in garlic and I'm gonna show you guys how to make them super, super meaty. That's the secret. Okay, let's make our mushroom. So a little bit of olive oil. I have some garlic, add that. Garlic is super important. I also wanna just say, my daughter does not like mushrooms. She doesn't like the texture but I know how nutritious they are and I really want her to eat them. So for her, I chop them, I basically mince them. So I'll make this dish and then I'll mince them and give them to her and she will eat them because they do still taste delicious even if you don't like the texture. Adding a little bit of salt will also help draw out the liquid. You know how mushrooms are. They have a lot of water inside of them. You draw that out so that they'll start to reduce and cook down without actually burning. You just wanna make sure that they're basically even on the bottom. And then you need to take a very heavy press. So I use a whole pot and just put it directly on top of the mushrooms as they cook. And that's going to press the liquid out and that is how you get very meaty mushrooms. 
Okay, so we've been standing here for about 10 minutes and they are pressed and they look so good. I cannot explain how delicious they smell, but that's the whole gist. So they really cook down, they're really meaty. You can use this on anything. You could put them in uh, tacos, pasta, which is what I'm going to do tonight. Any way you would be eating meat, you could just do the same thing with these mushrooms. So now you guys know my vegan cooking secrets. I love all these things. And I hope they make your vegan cooking a lot more delicious and more enjoyable as well, and easier as well too. And leave this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. It's really helpful for helping other people find my videos and hopefully also become vegan because that's my goal. Just don't tell anybody, but that is my goal. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.